checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. We had CM Punk and Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins, a special referee, and uh, Seth was just like, I mean, I don't know, man. This was a this was a match eight months in the making, probably the hottest match going into the show of anything. Oh, by far, and well, they it was came... all about Seth and his wacky outfit and making. It wasn't about the out. It wasn't about the outfit, but it was all about Seth. The thing was, it's like they were they had this big grudge match. They came out and the crowd was way more into this match at the start than any match on the show. Way more. As the match got going, they were not more into this match than several other matches on the show. It was like they they lost something, you know, and I think it was the Seth stuff. Seth became the focal point of the match very early. They really, you know, they, they opened with a big, you know, uh, fried Takayama deal, you know, for a couple seconds. And then they really didn't do, they just didn't really do a lot. You know, it was more just playing to Seth and... Um, the crowd, three minutes in, Chenny, we want tables, which I thought was really weird because it's this big grudge match and shouldn't you be like into the match as opposed to just wanting well, to Well, the fans you know? always want tables and Seth was allowing them to brawl around ringside, so it's just what the fans are going to do. These fans yeah. love tables nowadays. Yeah. The story of the match was that CM Punk just kept getting distracted by this stupid bracelet. It was... Uh, that, too, that, that too. Yeah, yeah, that was the whole thing. I mean, they did the match and, uh, you know, they go back and forth for a while and then finally CM Punk is about to... Uh, or he, first he gets the bracelet back from, from McIntyre. Well, well, so what happened, so he had, he had him in the Anaconda Vice, so he had the match won, but rather than keep the submission hold on, he took the bracelet off and let the hold go, which yes. was his first, the first time he did something stupid. So he takes the bracelet off, and they start fighting again. The bracelet falls on the mat, and uh, he goes for the uh, uh, the um, whatever his finish. And all of a sudden, he notices the bracelet is on Seth's wrist, and uh, he's furious. And Seth is like, dude, the bracelet fell on the mat. I was just putting it on my wrist. But Punk is furious, and so he starts arguing over this stupid bracelet, and uh, he ends up getting laid out by Drew. And then Drew runs Punk into Seth. Seth ends up outside. Punk hits the GTS, but of course there's no referee because Seth is outside. So Seth gets back in the ring, and Punk starts screaming at him. And Seth tells him, this is my ring. It's my rules. We don't need you here. We don't want well, you here. Just focus on this match. Well, one of the one of the things also, there was a spot where um, Punk, I think, was it the GTS? Punk had a spot where he had the match won by pin, and he didn't go down and pin him. He just started, you know... Messing around, essentially. So he starts yelling at Seth, and then finally Seth ends up calling him an asshole. So Punk can take no more, and he grabs Seth and gives him the GTS. Punk puts the bracelet back on, because all he can care about is this bracelet. Drew then kicks him in the balls, hits him with a claymore, and Seth wakes up. He counts the pin. Drew McIntyre wins the match. He counted very slow and really held up on the third one, almost making you... Like, it was really interesting the way they did it. They made you think that Punk really was going to kick out, and then he didn't kick out. So Drew ends up winning the match, and then he grabs a bracelet and he steals it again. So now, Drew can celebrate that he has beaten CM Punk. He's still got his bracelet, and CM Punk, of course, is going to be furious about all that. And uh, trivia note, Drew McIntyre... Your lineal AW World Heavyweight Champion. I guess so. Yep. The um, I I would I wonder if Drew McIntyre is going to face Gunther in uh, Berlin, because he got the win here and he made a point of saying that he's done with Punk, which of course means he's not done with Punk. I hope not, because we don't need the same finish for the fourth time this year. I know. Which is Drew almost wins and he gets screwed by CM Punk. Yeah, I guess they can do it again, but uh, I mean they need something to set up Hell in a Cell, so it yeah. could be done. But God, that's going to the well one too many times, in my opinion. Yeah. But who's Gunther going to face? Well, could he, I guess he could face Priest again. We had Damien and Finn having a meeting, and Damien apologized. But the one thing about that, the one thing about that is Priest is now a babyface. And Gunther's going to be a babyface in Germany, so it almost is like he needs a heel, and Drew's the natural heel. Yeah, but anytime, anytime there's somebody who is a heel that's a babyface in another country, the opponent ends up being a heel most of the time to those people. Right. So you could, you could. Yeah, but it. I don't think, I don't think they, I don't think they necessarily want Priest to be booed. 
So, but with Drew, I think they're fine with it. So Finn says, uh, I'm sorry too. Judgment Day comes first. If you want me out there, I'll be there. As soon as he said, I'm sorry too, I knew Priest was in trouble. Well, he was. We, we knew he was in trouble going in. Yeah. So Damian Priest and Gunther for the world title. So it's the best match on the show. And not only did they beat the hell out of each other, but Damian Priest probably beat more hell out of Gunther. He chopped this guy. It was like Jericho. Gunther's bleeding from his chest all over the place. Well, They're his, his, kicking each other and chopping Gun, each other. Gun, sweat Gunther, flying. Gunther's chest was all messed up when he came out from the Balor match on Monday. So he took a beating in that Balor match. So Priest hits the south of heaven, and Gunther kicks out, and he goes for the sleeper, and it gets avoided. Same sleeper they did. They they spent forever getting that sleeper over on Monday, so I knew they were going to do something with it here. Yeah. And then finally, Finn comes down to watch. Gunther clobbers him. Priest is enraged. Fires up, makes this great comeback. The place is going crazy. And he ends up hitting the uh, second south of heaven, and he goes to cover Gunther, but Finn puts Gunther's foot on the ropes. And the crowd gasps that he has done this. And Priest looks up on the big screen. He sees what happened, and now he's furious. And so Gunther grabs Priest from behind. He puts him in a sleeper hold. Priest fights free, reverses to a cradle. He tries to go back at Finn again, but Gunther grabs him, power bombs him, puts him back in the sleeper. Priest goes out. Gunther is your new world heavyweight champion. And uh, the Judgment Day is dead. And it's no, it's split. Current it's split. incarnation. And it's a current incarnation. It's, it's going to split. Yeah. I figure it's going to be Liv and Finn and, Dom and JD, JD and Dom and Carlito. Carlito. Probably. And then, yeah, and then Rhea and, and Priest. Priest. And maybe Jey Uso because Jey Uso has been trying to get uh, yeah, together with yeah. Rhea for months now. It's got to yeah, be leading that, to something. Yeah, that could make sense too. Yeah. Yeah. We had Miz and Truth coming out to announce 57,000 plus in attendance. New North American SummerSlam record, which is true. Well, yeah, it, it was the highest ever for SummerSlam. And uh, Gate was uh, over $8 million. I don't know if they hit 10. $8 but million. They, dollars. But it was over It was over 8. Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah, 10's the, the, key, the interesting one. Well, I mean, I guess 10 would make it the biggest non-WrestleMania gate in the history of wrestling. Eight would eight would not. So that's kind of where we stand. So Theory and Waller came out. They still have not broken up. They We're make fun ten, of... ten. It would, it would need 10.2, because 10 itself actually would be slightly below all in. They made fun of Jelly Roll and Machine Gun Kelly, even though he'd also been a heel earlier. So somehow, and this is a miracle, Jelly Roll snuck into the ring. Which, and the guy's like 450 pounds. He's gigantic, and he killed... Both guys with chair shots. He killed Theory with a choke slam. Theory took the best bump you ever saw. They hit a triple five knuckle shuffle. Somehow Jelly Roll got back to his feet and they celebrated. And I have to say, as far as like a buffer segment in between the semi main and the main, which they just for some reason love to do, this was much shorter, quicker, and better than usual. So I'll give him that. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.